I can get these. Check these machines out here. Make sure how that one's working. We're in Genesis 32. Genesis chapter 32 and verse number 4, I believe. Am I correct? 32 and verse number 4. Well, everybody was dressed up like cowboys and Indians today. Like I said a little bit earlier, I had a uh, a Cherokee hat band and a Blackfoot uh, uh, belt and a the bolo tie with a great seal of the state of the or the Chickasaw Nation. And my daddy's uh, belt buckle that he wore, uh, or one riding a Brahma bull and. In 1940-something, he was the world champion Brahma bull rider. He almost got killed doing that. A bull gored him after he got off the bull and carried him around the cow palace, gutted on his horn all over the place, and Slim Pickens and uh, Joaquin Sanchez saved his life. Slim Pickens was one of the greatest riders, by the way. He was the movie star. He was one of the greatest rodeo clowns that ever lived. And if you ever saw him in the old... Uh, movies that he rode. That man was one of the greatest horsemen you ever saw for a big man. He was a big man. But he just was like one with a horse. If you saw him ride in some of those old movies they did with John Wayne and stuff, he was fantastic. <coughs> There's Brother Harry. 32 and verse 4. 32 and verse 4. Yeah, well, we were waiting for you, Harry. <laughs> I tell them a story or two before we got here. That's real hard for me to do sometimes, you know. I run plum out of them. <laughs> I know one thing. As you look at Jacob's life, you see that God had his hand on Jacob all of his life. And I want you to just think about yourself right now as we before we get into this study. How many have been saved a long time? Can you see God in every month of your life? Yeah. I have seen God in my life. I've been through the ringer, by the way, <laughs> just in case you didn't know it. <laughs> I've been through the ringer in my life, but I can see God in every day of my life. You look back sometimes. I mean, right when you're going through it, you say, where are you, Lord? What's going on here? What's going on? And next year or two or three or four or five or ten years later, you'll say, well, he was there all the time. He was there all the time. Training. Training you. He trained me. Had a couple of people call me just the last two or three weeks, and, and they said, Brother Jim, I, I want to talk to you because I know that you've been through the ringer. <laughs> and you know the answers to everything. <laughs> I could. I wouldn't call that pastor over there. He never had any trouble. <laughs> but I want to talk to you. I've got some problems here, real bad problems. What am I going to do? Well, one thing you can always say that God, if you're God's, now if you're not God's, you're in trouble. But if you're God's, God is in control of your life. He is watching over you. I can guarantee you that. We're going to see that in Jacob's life tonight. I uh, this belt buckle I told you that I uh, I got it from Billy Buford. He got it from his uncle Dale, and uh, I put a silver dollar in it. And Dale was always sending me on wild escapades. Well, he sent me with a guy named Sonny with a horse named Sonny, and he was a a roper. And we were going to go out to Goodmanville. Well, Dale sent us back to get something. I don't know what in the world it was. We went back in his car and we got out there on Cottonwood Road and ran out of gas. A guy didn't have a dime. I had my world champion Brahma bull riding buckle with no bull in it anymore but had a silver dollar in it. And so he said, Jimmy, how hard is it to get that silver dollar out of that buckle? Of course, gasoline was only about 18 cents a gallon back then. You know, we're talking about ancient history. Well, I went in the shop and got the soldering torch, and out it came. <laughs> and we got gasoline. I finally put a belt buckle or a silver dollar in it one time, and I took and I filed the face of it off. 
and I wrote my name on it. <laughs> it happened too many times. All right. And nobody, they didn't know it was a silver dollar for a long time. I didn't tell anybody either. I didn't have to take it out. And finally, I took it out. I still have the silver dollar that's filed off and polished and everything. 32 and verse 4. Why Yishlach, Yaakov, Malakim, Lefana, El, Esau, Acho, Arsa, Seir, Sede, Edom. All right. And he kept on sending away Jacob messengers. Messengers. Look at that word messenger. Malakim. What word is that? What word in the New Testament? What word in Greek is that? Angel. Huh? Angel. angel. Angelos. Angel. A messenger, an angel is a messenger. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the pastors of the seven churches are angels. Messengers. They weren't just... A, I don't think there's any preacher that's ever been an angel. But we're messengers. Messengers. All right, messengers. Before his face unto Esau. What does Esau mean? Remember what Esau mean? What's his name mean? Harry, you remember what Esau mean? Well, come on, what's the Esau mean, Harry? You gonna get your A plus tonight? All right now. Harry, what's your name? Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Esau's name was Harry. All right. Harry. All right. And his brother. His brother. All right. To land. All right. Artsah. Artsah. Seer. What does seer mean? That's south of the Dead Sea, isn't it? All right. What does seer mean? What does seer mean? Well, some ancient lexicons call it the place of mountain goats. It's a mountainous region, a place of mountain goats. It's a, a land of strong storms, the land of Arabah, okay? The land of, star, of, of real strong wind storms and the land of mountain goats. And, uh, and what was old uh, Esau's nickname? Harry? Harry the goat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, smelled like a goat, didn't he? All right, field, prairie, sedah. What does prairie mean? Se uh, uh, um, moist. Moisture. It's enough moisture so animals grass will grow. That prairie will grow. Yeah, it's it's a moist land, moist land. All right. Of Edom. Edom means what? Red. Red. All right. Wasaw, Otam, Lemor, Ko, Tama, Tama Boom, Boon, Tama Boom, Tama Room, that is, Tama Room, La, Athenai, Li Esau, Ko, Amar, Avadika, Yaakov, M, Lavan, Garti, we achar. Ad ata. And he uh, ordered and kept on commanding strongly. See that PL stem there? He ordered and kept on commanding them, saying, Thus, in this way, all right, Cole, thus, in this way, uh, thusly, he said, Your servant, wait a minute. Did I jump? Yeah, I jumped the right line. You shall say to my Lord, to Esau, thus in this manner, he has said, your servant Jacob. With Laban, I have uh, pilgrimed, I have visited, I have uh, tented, and I have tarried and kept on tarrying until now. Now, Jacob is afraid, isn't he? He has sent these these uh, uh, messengers out to check on his brother. What kind of a what kind of a character is Esau? 
When Jacob last saw Esau, what was he doing? Dakota? When Jacob last saw Esau, what was he doing? What had he said? I want to kill that boy. I'm going to murder him. I'm going to slit his throat just as soon as I get a chance. That's the last words he heard from Esau. That he's going to kill him. And his mother begged him. She begged him to leave and go to her brother and get out of there until Esau's rage was over. Esau was a physical brute. Now, I think that Jacob was a lot stronger man than Esau. I think he was probably one of the strongest men. He, he may have been stronger and bigger than Samson. Samson, the Spirit of the Lord, came on him and he could do things. But I'm going to tell you something. Jacob was a strong man. He was a big man and he was a strong man. And we're going to find that out just a little bit later on. But he is afraid of his violent, tempered brother. He is a violent, physical man with a violent temper. <clears throat> a short fuse. And it doesn't take much to set him off. Wahi, Lee, Sor, Wahamor, Son, We Aved, We Saw Fa We Esh Li Cha, Li Hagid, La Adonai, Limpso, Ken, the Anika. And uh, have kept on becoming to me oxen. This is draft animals. Big animals, okay? This is big. This is sore. These are large draft animals. And uh, male donkeys is what it's called what? What's a male donkey called? Female donkey is called a jenny. What's a ma male donkey called? A jack. Boy, you got A plus tonight, brother. <laughs> All right, jack. All right. They're called jacks. And then herds of sheep and goats. This stone there, that means a small animal, sheep and goats. And uh, slaves. Now, Jacob had a lot of slaves. He had a lot of human slaves. Okay? In his going over there, he became very wealthy. And he had a lot of human slaves. And uh, female slaves. And I have kept on sending to tell or to declare for myself to my Lord to find grace, favor. Grace. What's the word for grace in, in Greek? For by grace are you saved. Charis. Charis. For by grace are you saved. In your eyes. I found grace in your eyes. Now, Esau is uh, a, an angry man. That's what his brother has seen of him. The last time he saw him, he was mad. I, I think every time that Jacob ever saw Esau, now if he one on one, I think Esau, I mean Jacob could have whooped Esau with one hand, to tell you the truth. But Esau was a treacherous man. But we're going to look here and we're going to see that God has got his hand on Laban. Remember when Laban was going to go take everything he had from Jacob? And the Lord himself, Jehovah, had a little prayer meeting with Laban. Even though he didn't believe in that God, he believed in gods and ancestral worship and all this kind of baloney. But, Je but Jehovah came and had a little prayer meeting with him. Now let's look and see what happens here. Wayash Shavu Hamalikim El Yaakov Lamor, Banu, El, Achika, El, Esau, Wigam, Halek, Likaratika, Wiarba, Miot, Ish, Himo. Here's an angry man, a violent man, with 400 people behind him. 400 people, I'd say that was a small army, wouldn't you? Yeah. Long time ago, up in Fish Lake Valley, where I used to live, 
there was a uh, Fish Lake Valley was the, the westernmost boundary of the Shoshone tribe, the western Shoshone tribe. And right over here, right over Gilbert Pass, just over Gilbert Pass, was Shoshone land. And the, and the chief over there in Shoshone land, or not Shoshone, but Paiute land, his name was Harry Harry. Harry, Harry, Harry. <laughs> I saved this one just for you tonight. All right. Harry Harry was over there, and there was troops of 225 men would come through there, over through Fish Lake Valley, and at that time there was a lot of antelope in that area. And those Indians lived off of those antelope and mule deer. Well, when the Indians, or when the soldiers would come through, they would take their uh, Springfield 4570 rifles, trapdoor rifles, and they'd shoot those antelope and deer down, and they'd leave a trail of antelope and deer all across the land. Of course, they'd eat a little haunch off of one every now and then or something, but most of them were just laying there dead, rotten. Well, Harry Harry told the chief of the soldiers, he said, if you come through here and kill any more of our antelope and don't eat them, we're going to kill you. Every one of you. And that was the truth. Esau's got more men than this. Okay, he's got 400. This is 225. Well, in 1870-something, I believe it was, this troop of soldiers came through and they were shooting the antelope and shooting the deer and shooting the duck and shooting whatever they wanted to shoot all the way through. Well, Harry Harry had sent his men out, and he says they're doing the same thing, Buster. Okay. At, at Gilbert Pass, they met up there, and when they came through there, they had some high places, and they rained arrows down on those soldiers, and they killed a bunch of them, and killed about half of them, actually. They went down to what was called White Mountain City, down, down by a creek down there, and washed themselves up. And they had to go, before they got to Big Pine, you know where I'm talking about, brother, they had to go over over Westcard Pass to the Narrows. Well, Harry Harry ran his men up there, and then they had 4570 rifles also, and they knew how to shoot them. Trapdoor rifles. And when they got up there at the Narrows, they killed every man but seven, I believe, out of 225. Were left dead all along, and they took all of the rifles and everything else, and those people got out of there with the skin of their teeth. And they were 225 of them. Well, Harry Harry, one of my friends, uh, had one of the rifles. He, Harry Harry gave him a rifle, uh, Her, uh, Herschel Hanson. He lived up there, and he came in the Fish Lake Valley about the 1940s. And uh, Harry Harry was still alive at that time, and he gave him one of those trapdoor rifles. And I, I held it in my hand, and matter of fact, it's still in his family. 225 men with Indians with arrows. And they wiped that whole bunch out. They wiped the whole bunch out. Deep Springs Valley is where that Deep Springs College is up there, the all-male college. I used to be a teacher there. I didn't teach any scholastic things. I taught mechanics. <laughs> so you had to have 140 IQ to go to that college. It's still that way. Let's go on now. Here's Esau with his army. More than 225, more than a whole troop. Okay. Wayashibu Hamalakim El Yaakov Lemor Banu El Akika El Isal Wigam Halek Lik Ritika Wiarba Miot Ish Imo. And he returned the messengers of Jacob, saying, uh, We have come unto your dear brother, unto Esau. What's Esau mean? Harry, and also coming to meet you and uh, 400 men with him. Now, what do you think Jacob's thinking? This, what do you think Jacob's thinking? Lord, where are you? You told me to come back. And here is my brother, and he was angry when I left, and evidently he's still angry now. Okay. Wayira, Yeko, Miod, Wayitzer, Lo, Wayahats, Et Haam, Asher, 
Ito, we at Hatson, we at Haba Bokar, we ha ge malim, Lishne ma hanot. And he was terrified, and he kept on being terrified. That's what it says there. Ra is the mean to fear and to shake. Terrified Jacob, exceedingly me owed. That's what that means, that's exceedingly. And he was in great and kept on being in great distress. All right? He kept on being in great distress. Would that worry you? Would this worry you? Yeah, he's a child of God now. And God called him, told him to go back, and he already met with Laban, and Laban, the Jehovah, worked him over. I said in a prayer meeting in the night, in a dream, a hypnose. And to him, and he divided, he kept on dividing the people who with him, and the flocks, and the herds, the flocks of the little cattle, the goats and the sheep, and of the big cattle, the draft animals, and the camels. What does the word camel mean? Huh? Gift. Gift. Thank you. Boy, you're just like a tar bucket mine. I tell you. <laughs> you got it. Nishneh. To two camps. Mahanot. Two camps. So he's got two camps. He's got his, his forces divided now. He's going to divide so they don't kill all of them. Wyomer, Emma, you know, Esau, El, Hamahane, Ha Hachath, We hit Kahu, We Haya, Hamahane, Hanahash, Ha Ha Nisher. Lithilita. And he kept on saying, if, him, Yavo. If he keeps on coming, Esau, unto the camp, one, and he uh, attacks it, and shall become the camp. Uh, the one that's left, the one being left, to escape. He said, I'll at least have half of my forces. Where do you think, who do you think he's going to put in that second group? He's going to, huh? Leah's going to be leading in her bunch. Because <laughs> he don't near love her near so much as he does Rachel. Where do you think Rachel and Joseph and all them is going to be? I mean, Benjamin, not, no, not Joseph, but Benjamin. They're going to be in the back of the pack. He's going to, he's going to protect them above all. Yesterday I told Stephen, he went out there and uh, I had a big old... Uh, Lost of a hornet's this big, and I said, "Now your do your your wife is going to go out there, you know, your future wife, and and uh, and she needs to be protected. I need you to go out there and spray this hornet's nest underneath this place that I can't get to because I've been killing them right and left, but I couldn't get to this one in harm's way, you know. <laughs> hornets are rough characters; they're bad dudes." I told him, "I just get back there and spray that thing and hold it down until all of them are falling dead." And he did. He's all right. You didn't get bit either, did you? Nope. Didn't get stung, didn't get bit. All right. 32 and verse 10. Wyomer Yaakov Elhi Avi. Avraham. We Elahi. Avi. Yitchik. Zavar. Ha Amar. Ile, Shuv, Li Artsika, Yuli Moladika. Jacob's doing some fast praying here. We Ativa, Imak. And he kept on saying Jacob to God. All right? To God, Elohim. 
my God, God of my father, Abraham, and God of my father, Isaac, Jehovah, all right, the Var, the Word, the Living One, the one saying unto me, he reminded God what he had told him. Okay? He reminded God what he told him. The one saying to me, you shall return to your land and to your kindred. And I shall deal good. I shall deal good with you. All right? And I shall deal good with you. In other words, he'll bring good things to him. Tov. That word tov is in that. Uh, the word kalos is there also in Greek. Kalos is spiritually good. I will spirit, deal spiritually good with you. Kalos and agathos. 32 and verse 11 now. We're moving along here. Katanita. Kataniti. Mikol. Ha. Ha. Sadim. Yumikol. Ha'emet, Asher, Asita, Et, Avdika, Ki, Bimakli, Avarti, Et, Ha Yarden, Haze, We Ata, Hayiti, Lishne, Mak, Arma. Cha note. You can't see with my glasses or without them. And I am, uh, and I have become very small. I have become very small from all the mercies of all the goodness and mercies, and from all the truth. Look at there, the word truth. Ha amen. I am all the truth. What is the word truth in Greek? Aletheia. Aletheia, which means uh, in the open. Jacob is known as a trickster and a shenanigan in the Bible by many people. But I'm going to tell you something. You look at his life with a microscope and you just see how truthful that man was. He went through a lot of bad circumstances in his life. And God was with him all the way. He was with him all the way. And I'm going to tell you something. God put him through the test. I'm going to tell you, he put him through the test, and here is one of the big ones right here. Here is a major exam right now. This is a major, major exam. Cindy, when you was going to college, you had to take a lot of exams, didn't you? And you still give a lot of exams, don't you? An exam tells you what? What they don't know. All right, and what they do know. <laughs> it's supposed to tell you what you do know, and this exam is going to tell us about Jacob, and it's going to tell us about God, too. In the exams that we see in the Bible between God and mankind, we see what God's made out of, and we see what man is made out of. Okay, and you can put yourself right in Jacob's place. Tonight, make yourself, put yourself in Jacob's shoes. The old Indian... Uh, adage was, an old Indian uh, saying was, walk a mile in your enemy's moccasins before you judge him. Walk a mile in his moccasins. The truth which you have done with your servant, because with my staff I have crossed over Jordan, the this. What did staff mean? What does his staff mean? What is the staff? What was Jacob? What was he? What was his occupation all of his life? He's a cowboy and a shepherd. And with that staff, he protected his animals and defended them. And on that staff was his whole lineage and the history of his life and family. All of his children's name were on that staff. Everything was on that staff. This is what they did. The whole lineage is on that staff. He said, with my staff, with my whole family... With my whole family and my whole life and everything that belongs to me, I have crossed over Jordan. All right? And now, I have become for two camps. I have split my forces, Lord. 
He's telling the Lord what what he's done. Lord, this is what I did to protect me. Now, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Lord? I know what you did to Laban back there. I know what you did back there when, when, when you were the boss of the plains and when you were multiplying my camels and multiplying my sheep and my cattle and, and goats and everything else. I know that you were the boss of the plains and you were making all the decisions back there. Even though he thought he was striping those rods and putting them out there and they were mating and they were animal aphrodisiacs or whatever he thought. It was God that was taking care of all of it. 32 and verse 12. Hot <coughs> Selini. Nah. Miad. Hashi. Miad. Esau. Ki. Yare. Anoki. Atoll. Pan. Yavu. We. Hik. Kani. Emma. All. Banim. <clears throat> Please, for my sake, I beg you, and my family's sake, deliver me, I beg you, please, from the hand of my angry brother. From the hand of Esau, because uh, fearing... I him, lest he uh, uh, keeps on coming and he strikes for himself the mother upon children. He is going to, I'm afraid he is going to kill mama and babies. He is a vicious man, Lord. I'm afraid he's going to kill even women and children. I think he'll kill all of my family, all of those that are written on my, on my staff. 32.15 Izim What? Did I jump over one? Oh, I did. Okay. 12 13 Okay. Thank you. We Ata Amarti Hetev Etev Imak We Samti Et, Zaraka, Kihol, Hayam, Asher, Lo, Yisafar, Merav. All right. I must have jumped over two pages, must have stuck together. And you have said, dealing well, dealing well for yourself, I shall deal well or good with you. And I shall make, I shall, will have made your seed, I will have made your seed like the sand of the sea, that Hayom, and uh, as, uh, or which, not can be numbered from multitude. Arithmia, that's the word in Greek, arithmia. We got a word arithmetic from that. 32 and verse 14 now. Wayalen, Shama, Bala, Balaila, Hahu, Wayika, Men, Haba, Biado, Men ha, the is all, achi. And he uh, kept on lodging there in the night, Balila, the that. And he kept on taking from what he had come in hand, a present for Esau, his brother. Now 32 and verse 15. Izim, Matayin, Utiyashim, Esrim, Rechalim, Metayim, Wielim, 
Esrim. Female goats. <coughs> Female goats. The word goat means what in, in Hebrew? What does the word goat mean? Strong. Strong smelling and they're strong. Now, uh, a goat is a small domesticated animal. But a goat you can hitch up to a cart or something. You can even put things on a goat's back and he'll carry them. Uh, a, a sheep, you forget that. sheep just barely can carry himself. Okay? But a goat's stronger. Okay? He's strong smelling and he's stronger. Uh, and uh, female goats, 200. And uh, billy goats, 20. Ewes. Right, Chalim. See that? Ewes, ewe lambs. All right? Little female ewe lambs. 200. And uh, rams, 20. <clears throat> How many pages you got left in your book? Not very many, huh? Getting toward the end, we'll have to get number four, which we have printed now. Gimalim, Minikot, Yuvanihim, <clears throat> Shiloshim, Peros, Ar, Baim, Euphorim, Asarah, Atanot, Esrim, Wayarim, Asarah. Camels. What does camel mean? What's camel mean? Remember, Chris? What does it mean? Gift. All right. It means gift. Camel is God's gift to these people that would go across these deserts. And uh, a camel can uh, go without water for days and days and days. And it is a wonderful pack animal. In the 1850s, uh, Truxton, uh, was it not Truxton? Beal, General Beal, uh, brought some camels out to California, and the camel camp was right up here at Fort Tejon. And he brought those camels out here because he said that uh, they could outdo anything. They were going to use them for uh, Postal Express. And they were going to use them in the Army. And he was the head of the Army, by the way, at that time, uh, General Beal was. And with uh, what was the, uh, the head of the Confederate Army, what was his name? Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis was, was his partner. And they brought all these camels out here, and they proved that they could outdo horses and everything else. They went across the hardest deserts and everything else. To begin with, the mules and the horses were outdoing them. But all of a sudden, in the end of the time, the camels were way out ahead and the mules were way behind and the oxen and everything else. A camel is a gift. It's a gift. When the Civil War struck out, Truxton Be or, uh, uh, General Bill and J Jefferson Davis split partnership and the government put the camel deal to the side. If you go out here to Pioneer Village, you'll probably see plaques and everything. And if you go over there at uh, that summer or winter retreat out there in the Mojave Desert, what's that place called over there where everybody goes? You'll see one of the camel, a camel monument out there. What, I can't think of the name of that city. No, no, the, the retreat out there in Arizona. It's a great big place where they have swap meets and everything, and thousands, a hundred thousand people and campers go out there in this place, wherever it's called. But there is a camel monument out there, and you'll go and see the different camels. And they finally turned the camels loose, and they became wild camels in the Mojave deserts. <coughs> camels giving suck, all right, and uh, young colts. 30 cows and 40 bulls and 10 jennies or female donkeys and 20 young jacks, male donkeys, 10. Thirty-two and 17. Why you 10? Biad. Avadal. Eder. Eder. Lava Do, Wyomer, El Avado, Iv, Ivru, Lefane, 
we rewa tish atash shimu ben either yuvan either and he kept on giving in the hand of his slaves droves flocks all right flocks uh, and a drove separately and he said and kept on saying unto his uh, slaves pass over uh, pass over before my face out in front of me and leave a wide space and you shall keep on putting between me a drove or between drove and drove in other words put a lot of space between each grove what he's going to do is he's going to impress O Esau with gifts He's sending all these gifts and he's putting a lot of space between them. Here will come a bunch of, of uh, a donkeys, a males and female donkeys, and then uh, ewe lambs and rams and uh, goats and uh, camels and uh, bulls and uh, cows. Just keep on sending him gifts. That's all he's going to see is money coming. Money, money, money. Shower him with gifts. 32.18 White saw et harishon limor ki yifagashika Esau achi wishelika limor leme ata wa ana telek ulemi ele lefanika and he intensely commanded, he kept on intensely commanding, the first saying, when, or because he meets you, Esau, my brother, and uh, he has asked you, saying, to whom do you belong, and from where you go, and to whom these ones uh, before you, right before your face he's given all these instructions now he's going to break his, his brother's spirit and his meanness and his anger by giving him lots of gifts and Esau is a physical man and he understands physical things why am Marty la avi la avi Li Yaakov Menik Cha, He, Shilu Ha, Le Adonai, Le Esau, Wehene, Gam, Hu, Aharinu. And you shall uh, have said to your servant, actually, it's from your servant here that. That uh, preposition lameth there can mean to or from sometimes. From your serpent, servant uh, to Jacob, from your servant uh, to Jacob, a gift it. Uh, the gift she is sent to my Lord, to Esau, and behold, also he behind us. In other words, he's following up behind us. 32 and 20. <coughs> White saw Gom et Hash Shini Gom et Hashalishi Gom et Kal Ha Holikim Achare Ha Adarim Limor Kadav Bar Haze La Da Barum El Esau Ben Osa Akim Ota And uh, he intensely kept on commanded or uh, commanded them. He intensely commanded both uh, the second also the third also 
sign of the direct object, and all the wands walking are going. That's a participle. Masculine, plural, car, cal, participle. After the droves. Saying in word. All right, in word. Saying in word the this. You shall speak words. See the word devar there? The root of that, devar. Page 180 and page 210 on the, in the different lexicons. That devar, that's where we get our word Jehovah from that word. That's where we get the idea of word in the New Testament, okay? And you shall speak words unto him. All right? And, and look over here on the, the other part of the verse. It's a saying in word. Ka adabar. See that? Ka adabar. Saying in words. In a speech. In an edict. All right? The this. You shall speak words. These very words that I'm telling you to say. This is a prepared speech now. Esau. The Esau in your finding him. When you find Esau. Mitzah. When you find Esau. Cal infinitive constructs. Second and and the suffix is second person masculine plural. When you find him. Why a Martim? Gam. Hine. Avadika. Yaakov. Acharinu. Ki, Amar, A, Ka, Peru, Para, Fana, Ba, Menaha, Ha, Holy Cat, Lefane, Wa, Achare, Ken, Ire, Fana, Yule, Yisa, Fane. Now we go back. And you shall shall have said also, Behold, your servant Jacob behind us, because he has said, I shall cover. Look at that word. Brother Roger, what can you tell us about this word here, kafar? The root of that word. What about that word? Do you know anything about that word, kafar? Has any of you ever heard of the, the word yon kafar? Huh? What's that mean? The day of atonement. The day of atonement. What Jacob said here is, I am atoning. I am atoning for all of the bad things that I ever did to you. I am making atonement. He's making atonement. All right? I am making atonement. I shall cover up. I shall make atonement. And that's word, first person construct, PL cohortive. All right? I shall make an atonement. And then his face in presence, the one going before my face. And afterwards, thusly, I shall... Keep on seeing his face. Perhaps, maybe, he will lift up my face. He'll make me smile, maybe. I'm going to make him smile, and maybe he'll make me smile. We'll smile together. We'll lift up our faces. Our, our, we'll lift up our expression. We'll have a light expression. All right, a light expression. 3222. Why to our vor? Why to our vor? Him and they ta. All, panal, wehu, lan, balaida, hahu, bam, ma, hune. And uh, passed over the present, the gift, before him, before his face. And he lodged in the night, the that, in a camp. All right. 
Now he's crossing over the brook Jackman. I've been right by this place. And I just imagined this. Now this is going to tell you something about Jacob. It's going to tell you how strong that man was and how strong his faith was. Why you gone? By Lila. Q. We you call. Et. Shiti. Nasha. We et. Shiti. Shifoth tall. We et. Achad. Asar. Ye lado. Why ya avo. Why abor. Why ah. I'll get it right in a minute. Why ya abor. Et. Ma abor. Ya. Ya. Buck. Ya buck. <clears throat> and he kept on rising up in the night to that. And he kept on taking his two wives and his two female slaves and one ten, all right, eleven of his children, and he crossed over crossing Jabbok. The word Jabbok, look at that word Jabbok there. Now what does Jabbok mean? Bubbling, babbling brook. Babbling, bubbling brook. I, one of the most beautiful things, that uh, sights that I think it is, is when you go and you see a brook running out of the ground. Just start running and babbling and, and trickling. Uh, it's a beautiful sound and a beautiful sight. Up in Wyman Canyon up there, right at Wyman Creek, right at the old, what they call Robert's Ranch up there, Right there at the ranch, right there is where Wyman Creek starts. You go out there, up above the ranch, there's nothing. You walk right there, and out of the ground runs this babbling brook. And when I saw that, I thought about the brook Jabbok. The brook Jabbok. And there in that brook is watercress, and all, and on down there are all these little wild trout. All down that. You can go, and there's little, little, what we call tiers of water, little kind of little dams and little waterfalls and it just keeps on going like that all the way down into Deep Springs Valley. That's where I told you where Deep Springs Harry, Harry, Harry went and attacked those 225 men. Right there. And that babbling brook. That babbling brook. 3224. <coughs> Why yik kachim? These are some hard words, aren't they? Why ya a barim? Et hana chal. Why ya a bar? Et asher lo. And he took them, and he caused them to cross. And he took them, and he caused them to cross the brook, the hana chal, the brook. And he calls to cross which to him. 3225. Why ya water? Yaakov li vado. Why ya a bek? Ish imo ad alot ha sha char. And he was left, he kept on being left, Jacob, alone, separate. That's what it means, separated, alone. Left alone. And he wrestled, and he kept on wrestling personally. That's like middle voice. He kept on wrestling personally with a man, with him, until the going up of the dawn. Now, Jacob is wrestling with a man. And this man is the pre-incarnate Christ. This is Jesus that he's wrestling with. He's wrestling with Jehovah. Jehovah means what? What does the name Jehovah mean? We call it Devar in the Old, in the Old Testament. When we come to the word Jehovah, we say Devar because they did not speak his name. And in the New Testament, he's known of as the Word. Jehovah means he who shall become. He who shall become. And of course the fulfillment of that is John 1.14. And pretty soon Randy will have that all printed out on the website. John 1.14. Kaiholo Sarks again, and the Word 
flesh He became. Well, before Jesus became flesh, He had a pre-incarnate self that walked with Adam in the garden that appeared to Abraham that walked with Abraham before they were going down to Sodom when God was going to the story Sodom and all the cities around there. Here they all are. And this is the pre-incarnate Christ. The pre-incarnate Christ. Pre-incarnate Christ. And this is who Jacob is wrestling with. Now Jesus was a strong man, wasn't he? He was a strong man. Now, lay all of your predetermined ideas of Jesus being a carpenter aside. What was he probably? Not a carpenter, but what? A stonemason. Now, a stonemason is a pretty strong man, isn't he? Now, just I want you to understand, this is a pre-incarnate. This is before Jesus, but this is Jesus before he became flesh. All right? Before he became flesh. All right? Now, how many of you ever wrestled? Brother Harry, did you ever wrestle? Brother Abe, was you a wrestler over there in Korea? Did you wrestle? All right. And you were in the army, weren't you? Everybody has to be in the army. Did they do physical exercises and rat and martial arts? Yeah. And you had to build up your strength and everything else, and you wrestled with people. Uh, brother, did you ever wrestle at that all? Yeah. You wrestle. Everybody used to wrestle. You know, kids get out and they wrestle all over. Brother Roger, do you ever wrestle? <laughs> Cindy, do you ever wrestle? <laughs> Pam, did you wrestle? Chris, did you wrestle? Yeah, I had two older brothers. Two older brothers yeah. to wrestle with. Yeah, I played football. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> wrestling. Well, Jacob's wrestling all night with the pre incarnate Christ. And you know what? Jesus was a stonemason, and stonemasons have to lift heavy rocks. But remember, this is before that. All right? Why yar? He, lo, yako, lo, why yika? Bikof, yeriko, watika. Koth, Yerek, Yako, Be He A Vako, Vako, Imo. And he saw, and he kept on seeing that not he had prevailed against him. Now, Jesus could not overpower, the pre incarnate Christ could not overpower Jacob physically. I want you to understand. Here we have two personages. And Jacob is the stronger person. He's stronger than Jesus, so to speak. So Jesus, he cannot overcome Jacob because of his strength and power. He's a physical man. I mean, this is a strong, big man. So what does Jesus do? He uses supernatural powers now. He has to resort to supernatural powers. And what does he do? He dislocates his hip. How many of you ever had a dislocated hip? If you haven't had a dislocated hip, you haven't done anything. <laughs> you, you haven't had any fun at all. When I was young, <clears throat> my hips were double-jointed. I could stand and pop my hip out. Either hip. And it saved me many, many times. My stepdaddy, Dale Grimley, he used to tell me, he said, Jimmy, that's a rough horse. And he made throw me off. And he said, I know that he's not going to hurt you because you just hit the ground and bounce. If one falls on you, you just roll over. He just rolls over and you just get right up. He's telling me how strong I was. You know, this is baloney. This is a bunch of baloney. Because I broke just like he did. But I didn't. And I mean, I didn't. But horses would fall with me and roll on me sometimes, and my hips would come out of place. And that saved from breaking my legs. And I had a horse roll over me three times. One time a car rolled over the horse and me both, and the horse rolled over me. My hips both came out of place and kept from breaking my legs. My knees came out of place also. 
My shoulder came completely out of place and hit my neck and almost broke my neck. When I got up, my shoulder socket was up here. And I got up and I went, and it goes pow and popped back in place. Unless you've had a joint out of place, you don't know how much pain that is. That's a lot of pain. I've had plenty of them, so I know. I can tell you right now, I know what Jacob felt like. After they did the radiation on my hips, they don't pop in and out of place now. If they pop out of place, it hurts. They shot me right through radi with radiation like that. Burned them up. Now they hurt all the time. I used to get pop them out of place and didn't hurt. Now when they pop out, they hurt. And he saw that not he prevailed against him. And he struck the socket of his hip. And uh, she was dislocated. She was his hip. She was dislocated the socket of his hip, of Jacob. And his wrestling with him. Now, the pre-incarnate Christ used a little supernatural power on him. And zapped him. Okay? But he wouldn't turn loose of him yet. I'm going to tell you something. Jacob wasn't going to turn loose. Even in pain, he could not overcome it. He held on to it. Wyomer. Shali Chini. Ki Allah. Ha Sha Char. Wyomer. Lo. A Shali Cha Ka. Ki M Barak Toni. And he kept on saying, Send me away, send me away, send me away. And I mean Jesus, the pre-incarnate Christ, is saying, Send me away. Let me go. Because has gone up the dawn. In other words, it's getting uh, daylight. And he said, No, not. I will send you away unless if you shall... Intensely bless me. Look at that word PL, perfect. You will have blessed me. Now here Jacob is. He's coming up against his brother with 400 men. Okay? His brother with 400 men, and he's out here by himself. And by the way, Jacob spends a lot of time alone with his herds out in the field. All of his life, he spends a lot of time out in the field. But this time, he has been visited by Jehovah himself. And he wrestles with Jehovah all night long, the pre-incarnate Christ, the pre-incarnate Jehovah. Jehovah means what? He who shall become. And then he tells him, I'm not going to turn you loose. Wyomer, Elah, Ma, Shemika, Wyomer, Yaakov. And he said unto him, What your name? What the name to you? The, the word name means what? What does the word name mean? Brother Harry, you remember what the word name means? Huh? Ha, uh, Brother Abe, you remember that, what the name word name means? What does name name mean? What else is, what can you use in place of name? Sharon? Well, that's it? That's, did you see that girl? <laughs> Walking dictionary. Name or monument or pillar. What is your renown? What is your name? What have you been known by? And what does Jacob mean? Remember what Jacob means? Huh? What? To follow the heel. Thank you, Cindy. To follow the heel. You got your A plus tonight too. You got two. You have three A pluses tonight, sir. Jacob, the one who follows the heel, the trickster, the one who trips. Thirty-two and verse twenty-nine. Wyomer, Lo, Yaakov, Ye Amer, Od, Shimka, Ki, Em, Yisrael, Ki, Sarita, Em, Elohim, We Em, Anashim, What to Call. I don't want to quit this. I mean, we're going along here. You want to go for a couple more verses? Because this is the subject. All right? And he kept on saying, Not Jacob, you shall be called. You shall keep on being called. Still your name. But 
Israel. Now, what does Israel mean? What does Israel mean? The word Sarah is the root of this. And Sarah. Sarah and Sarah. What does Sarah mean or Sarah mean? Brother Archer, remember? Tenacious. Huh? It means tenacious. It means to wrestle. It means to compete. It means to combat. Fight. To war. Israel. Man who wrestles. The one who wrestles with God. The one who wrestled with God. That's what Israel means. The one who wrestled with God. Because you have fought with God. You have fought with Elohim. And with men. And you have uh, prevailed. You have prevailed. 3230. Why Yishal. Yaakov. Why Yomer. Hagedal. Nah. Shemika. Wyomer. Lema, Ze, Tishal, Lishni, Lishmi, that is, Lishmi, Wai, uh, Varek, Ota, Sham. And he asked Jacob, and he said, Tell, I beg you, or please, your name. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Cindy, who was this he wrestled with? Jesus. This is Jesus. This is Jehovah that he wrestled with. Jehovah means he who shall become. The fulfillment of the Jehovah title in the New Testament is John 1.14. And the word flesh he became and dwelt among us. And we all got to see him. And how did man wrestle with him in the New Testament, didn't they? Didn't all of those... Jews over there wrestled with him for a long time, about 33 and a half years they wrestled with Jesus. And they murdered him. And he said, Why then you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. Why did you ask about my name? You know what his name, what he, why he asked about his name? He wanted to know whose God's name was, who the name, what the name of God was. He could have told him, I'm Jehovah. But now let's see what Jacob called him. And this is the last verse. 32, 31, and we'll, we'll, we'll finish it. Wayikra, Yaakov, Shem, Hamagom, Peniel, He, Ra'ati, Elohim, Panim, El Panim Wata not sell Nath she And he kept on calling Jacob the name of the place Face of God Face of God Because I saw God's faces I saw God's faces I saw God's faces unto faces and yet was preserved my life my soul I saw God face to face face to face John 1 1 says in beginning kept on being the word and the word kept on being an inseparable part of proston theon face to face Jehovah and God are one Jehovah and God are one and they're face to face and then the last part of that verse says, because the Word or the God kept on being the Word or the Word kept on being God. Jesus, when He was on this earth, even right here tonight, He was God. When He walked in His body, in His carnate flesh, in the New Testament, He was God. He was God in the New Testament. And that God is Jesus or Jehovah in the flesh. We'll start at 32 and 32 next week. Is it? This is the 26th, isn't it? <clears throat> and where did we go from and to tonight? We started off at 32 and verse 4. All the way to 32, 32. Is that far enough, Cindy? In one shot? All right. God bless you.
go out and do something eternal. And let's uh, be dismissed. Uh, Chris, would you mind coming up here and dismissing us in prayer? See, I can't hear your prayer back there. All right? <coughs> Thank you, God, for this time that you gave us all together to read your word and learn and interpret it and help us to take it with us each day and think about it throughout this week and be prepared for next Sunday's lesson. Thank you for all of us, and please keep us in good health and take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen.